All right, so let's. Uh, so actually, this is great because we've been talking a lot about c- the controller right now and the adapter. Uh, we actually have a question of the week back this week, um, and this is <laughs> this one was uh, sort of <clears throat> came up during the Mario Kart Eight live stream, mm-hmm. where uh, Greg brought up. Uh, someone asked us what are what is you know the best controller for Mario Kart, and we were all kind of saying, oh, they're actually all pretty good. Yeah. Because um, I was winning with you know the the split Wii remote and nunchuck, but Brian was playing with the gamepad, but Greg was playing with the Wii U Pro controller. Yep. And then it, Greg was like, I think the Wii U Pro control Wii U Pro controller is the best controller Nintendo has ever made. And I was wow. like, absolutely not. It is not one of the best controllers they've ever made. I think it's one of the most derivative they've ever made. You actually said, I think you said it was one of the worst. I believe it's one of the worst as well. But I you, believe you it's threw because it down a flight of stairs. it's so yeah. derivative. I own one. Um, but uh, more importantly, I, I do see, though, that the gamepad and the Wii U Pro Controller, they were going for parity, right? That's why the analog sticks are above. Yeah. That's why the buttons are below with the D-pad underneath. But it just does not – it doesn't seem special to me, whereas I look at the GameCube controller, that's special to me. I look at the Super Nintendo controller, that's special to me. I look at the NES controller as someone who had a chance to play games on a Commodore 64 with a joystick, that's special to me. Sure. Uh, so the question of the week, before you guys weigh in, and you can weigh in with your answers, is – wait. What's the best Nintendo controller of all time? Wavebird. Yeah. GameCube Wavebird. Yeah. yeah. Come on. I'm, I'm kind of with you on that. Every Why? other con- Well, first of all, nostalgia, man. Every other console had wires, and you get this awesome wireless controller that actually worked. It felt good. It, was, it wasn't beautiful, right? It yeah. looked clunky. It looked like, it, it looked like one of the like, a container ship from Star Wars, where yeah. it like, had this giant container sitting on, on top of a beautiful ship. But... Um, I, I just I thought that controller was great. I liked the triggers. I actually loved the big A button too. Like mm-hmm. now when I'm yeah, playing like Mario Kart, yeah. when I'm playing Mario Kart with the Pro Controller, and I think the Pro Controller is absolutely better than whatever you're using, Ho- Otero. Um, Wait, the Mario Kart? No, no, I think it's fine. Okay. I can race with it. I can whip right, anyone in this room with but, that controller, but it doesn't matter. I don't like it. That's true. He, he usually wins. Um, but I I love the way the Wavebird felt, and I got I didn't I don't get the the thumb blister that I get yeah. with a pro controller. I actually think they went backwards um, well, with comfort. And for mm-hmm. context for folks, at the time when the Wavebird came out, there were wireless controllers, but they were always made by third parties. Yeah, yeah. For the, like, the PlayStation were Logitech 2 and, yeah, and, yeah. And, and, and the Xbox. And they were terrible. And, or, the, or they dropped They signal lost signal or, all or, the time. Yeah, they were just unreliable. And then here comes Nintendo with the Wavebird, and it was a, it was a first-party wireless controller, and it was great, yep. you were going to say. Um, I... I I actually, I'm thinking about it a little more. I loved the Wavebird. It was one of the best controllers ever mm-hmm. made. It might be my favorite. But I'm not wild about the D-pad on the Wavebird. I think mm-hmm. that the D-pad on the GameCube controller in, in, in general is very tiny. Yeah. It's, it's kind that's of in a weird place. That's the common complaint. No, that's mm-hmm. um, absolutely so if, fair. if I think of a, a controller that kind of works with everything, then uh, the, the GameCube controller comes, comes close. But, like... I don't want to play Super Metroid on that thing, you mm. know, and I don't want to play uh, like Link to the Past or something, or like a, a, a kind of like a Twitch bl- based platforming game, you know. Yeah. Um, so I, it's I'm somewhere between the Super Nintendo controller and the Wavebird as as my favorites of all time. But of course, if I want Super Pick Nintendo, one. then I'm losing out. Fine, the Wavebird. Fine. The Super Nintendo, the Super NES controller is so say, iconic, right? Okay, I was but say, you say something bad about Super Nintendo. No, I, li- I, I like it, but podcast. when you hold it now, the shape is not ergonomic, right? It's like you're holding a pill from Dr. Mario or something. It's like it's the wrong shape but for this, hands. We're talking about the but best we, controller of all time here. Right? Yeah, I don't know but if this we're is, really but this is why I do. Or, this is why I do but, like the Wii U Pro controller because I think it's awesome. It, it, I think it's got a great D-pad. You like, but it's not your favorite of all time. I think it. I mean. It's up there. Yeah, I, I think I, it's got a great D pad. I think it's got great sticks. It's the got sticks great triggers. Should be reversed on the right. It's like they almost they did it to match the game pad, but also yeah. to say, hey, we realized the Xbox 360 controller was really good, well, so we can't do the sure. same thing. It's got right? also it's got yeah. 90 yeah. hours which, of battery life, which by the way is really derivative yeah. of Nintendo design. Greg, Greg and I got in an argument of, about the Wii U Pro controller mm-hmm. quite recently, and uh, his argument to me was, and I'm just gonna you know sort of sum this up because he's not here to defend himself, and so I shouldn't talk too much about this. But he said, you're just mad because this is the controller where they stopped trying to be different. That's true. And I'm like, well, yeah, but you know what? Everyone else's controller design came from the Super Nintendo. That's what They're I all said. all from that. Yeah. Like, I, that is the, the only, I was the like, only exception n- might n- be Microsoft's. Nintendo is allowed to steal even. back a little bit because they've been getting their shit robbed for years. <laughs> <laughs> for years. They invented so many things no that ended up in every major controller. Yeah. No one's taking the game pad, no. Yeah. Yeah, no, I... I I just think the the 
Pro Controller was more of a cop out in that they have the chance to innovate with something on it. You know, yeah. when I play PS4 now and you have the touch screen and all these like little things that they added to it that make it special and stand out, it's kind of sad to see how yeah. restrained the Pro Controller is. Right? Yeah. Sure. yeah. And um, I, I wish it had a little bit more personality to it. And I wish so, the sticks were reversed on the right. So I, uh, I my, my thing was specifically as well, I think the GameCube controller design was a really good design. It was two buttons short, right? It didn't have a select button and it didn't have an extra bumper yeah. button at the top. That was top. a big deal. No, and that was a dumb, problem for third. It, it only had one the dumb Z little, The dumb little button. Z. Z. Yeah, the little Z, Z button. Little baby there was Z. only one. There weren't two Zs. Now uh, they have ZL and ZR, which, yeah. by the way, you shouldn't label your controller that way. I think that's bad. Uh, <laughs> but um, I do. Like how, So press the ZR button if someone tells you that. Or you're like, wait, what? I don't know what that I is. I mean, uh, dude, they, on the Xbox One controller, they had to write the names of the buttons upside down. Because for years they were the other way around. So now when they say press the L2, yeah. people tilt the well, thing up. Well, they get away they look with the same it. thing, I guess, right? Because it's RB and LB, yeah. you know, for left bumper, right bumper. Yeah. But anyway, um, Z, I feel like. By the way, it's really interesting because Z was supposed to be a the lot about third. No, Z yeah. was supposed to be the third dimension, yeah. right? Like it was and it was a lock underneath the N64, and you're controlling 3D space with it, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. And I'm not a big fan of the N64 controller, by the way. Well, in hindsight, <laughs> it's an oddity, but it was cool when it came I th- out. I thought it, it was, was great okay when it came out. I thought it was great for, I mean, because well, we got to let them finish. But, but okay. no, it's yeah. interesting Sorry, that that I mean, concept no, of the Z trigger turned into a shoulder button. Yeah. Which yeah. is like, really, now you're saying Z1 and Z2 and, or ZL and ZR, yeah. and you're not really using ZL, it for three-dimensional ZR. control. Yeah. And like, it's, it's kind of silly now. Okay. Sorry, you were going to No, say. I was going to say, I, th- I thought the Z trigger worked really well on uh, the N64 because it was sort of synonymous with that era of first person shooters that were happening at the time, like yeah. GoldenEye and Perfect Dark. <gasps> it, was felt, a it felt like a gun trigger, you yeah. know? So it mm-hmm. had that. I don't think it should have been brought out to the shoulder of a GameCube yeah. controller later. Well, I so. think the GameCube controller design was iconic and special and good in its time. I just think they could have improved on it. I think you could have added the two buttons, maybe even if you wanted to put a home button on there, go right ahead and add a, an extra Z if that's what it took. But I felt like the layout was was just right, right? You had the really big A button. You had the X and Y kind of surrounding it. Um, it, it just felt right, and it, that's something that. And it was an improvement on the Super Nintendo design. Yeah. Whereas, and that's the design that everyone adopted. And Nintendo just kind of said, "Yeah, well, we did that, and everyone took it. Now we're going to do something different." And then the N64 controller, like I hated the separated C buttons. I just thought it was okay for cameras because that's what they were sort of used for. But then you play emulated games, and you're trying to play the Ocarina in Virtual Console on, on Wii, and you're like, "Wait, which one is what?" Yeah, yeah. Oh, God. And but, you could use the C stick for that. How cool to be was fair. that? How the cool nipple was they called it? it? I love. <laughs> yeah, I, I love I the concept of designing a controller around the functions of your game, and they yeah. rightfully said, "Hey, on console." you're going to need a way to control the camera. They didn't think of a stick as intuitive camera control. They thought, hey, left and right, you swing the camera, you zoom in, you zoom out. And then mm-hmm. they said, oh, but what about what about people who love the D-pad? It's like, oh, then you hold it like this on the outer. Yeah. Some people held it and tried to so press the weird. Z button mm-hmm. from the outside. Yeah, there's so many styles yeah. to choose from yeah. to, to hold it. It was Nintendo confusing, but it was, I love the, the concept of saying, what are the kinds of games we're going to make? And here's the controller to support that. And they did that with the Wii too, right? Uh-huh. Only then they quickly realized, oh crap! You know, EA is gonna ma- want to make Madden. Activision is gonna want to make Call of Duty. Oh god! Yeah. And, and that was, here are fifty more controllers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and that yeah. was the, the. I think that was the lesson learned from the GameCube era, where it was like, hey, our controller was different than everyone else's, and that mm-hmm. caused a problem for third parties when it came to making games because yeah. you had two less buttons to work with. Fewer. The, o- um, the other uh, fewer buttons to work mm-hmm. with. I'm, I'm sorry, just one last thing. Sure. I think also on um, the GameCube, they also designed. I mean, I think the Nintendo 64, the GameCube and even the Wii, Nintendo was really good at designing games around their own controllers. Because yeah. in the GameCube era especially, mm-hmm. I felt like a lot of games took really good advantage. First party ones, uh, Smash being a great example of that. Smash Melee just absolutely yeah. worked perfectly with the Melee controller. Yeah. I mean, with the GameCube controller. So well, in fact, that I don't think they can ever get rid of it now. Yeah. yeah. You know? As no, no, you can not. see now. Yeah, yeah. yeah that, that's, that ghost is going to chase them forever now. Um, but wh- one of the things they did stop doing around, uh, you know, after the GameCube and the N64 was they ditched the candy-colored button thing. 
like a colorful oh, yeah. buttons used to be on all their controllers, right? right? I like and it just went away. I, I liked too. it too. I thought it was great until I started playing games like Resident Evil 4 or Resident Evil Remake, which were like dark, gritty, uh-huh. violent games. And you look down and you'd be like, the jelly hit the yellow controller. thing with the purple button. <laughs> yeah, like the jelly beans on the side. You're playing a murder game with jelly beans. It was the really funny. The rainbow. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But I, I like how I, I, I like uh, I like how Xbox pulled Wait, it off though. Yeah, the, the Xbox has it. it it's kind of like glassy marbly looking yeah, I, I thought that was yeah. cool there was a good in between yeah. I always like remember I played the Super Famicom which had mm-hmm. the colored yeah. buttons you guys had like one. light purple and dark purple Ugh. it was weird yeah. that was awful Why and then after that? a few years it all turned yellow yeah. Oh, same oh, yeah, with the console right. they just turned well everything. yeah there, there's a great article on that if you look on the internet um, just saying it was like a mixture uh, imperfect mixture of the flame retardant chemical in yep. the plastic oh is that what it was that's what it was that's Dreamcast why it, is the worst one Oh, it will turn yellow. Oh God! Do yours turn a, yellow? I have a bright yellow oh, yeah, one. I bet they changed the plastic. Ah. I have a all bright right. yellow. So I'm going to save my controller. We've been <laughs> talking all this time, and I never said which controller I'd sell on. Yeah. I think I'm going to pick Super Nintendo. I feel like the Super Nintendo controller uh, is w- the best controller in Nintendo. Huh. It was so good, in fact, that everyone has followed suit since, and that design is still relevant today. I think a lot of people forget where that design came from. That was a Nintendo-made like idea. And okay, don't get me wrong. Sony added two analog sticks on it. Microsoft improved on it a little more by offsetting them, right, so that one was higher than the other, and that made it really comfortable for first-person shooters. And even now, the PlayStation 4 controller, I love what they did uh, to what Sony did with that controller was good really controller. smart. Oh, yeah. It is mm-hmm. a great controller. But even for your giant hands, the Super NES controller. Well, I wasn't that controller. giant when I was a kid, man. <laughs> oh, my God. All right, but I, I think I would settle on that. So, folks, you're listening. That is this week's question of the week. What is the best Nintendo controller of all time? Please email IGN, uh, wait, is it? Uh, NVC at IGN.com yeah. and let us know your responses. In the subject line, please type the letters Q O T W colon controller. Nice. Just so it's easier to find your I w- response. I want to see if anybody says Virtual Boy because it had a weird ass controller. They oh, solved man. the problem that did not need to be solved, which uh-huh. was that left handed people did not need a, a left, a left a D pad on the right. Like, what was well, that about? Are you left handed? I'm not. Oh, okay. It was a, th- it was are a you super. Left-handed? No. Are you left handed? No. So uh, it was a Super Nintendo controller with yeah. two bananas hanging off of it. <laughs> it's basically it was just an SS, was SNES the, pad with d- these giant it was Oculus before. It, was the first. it looked like a wheelbarrow. <laughs> it, it was, was like the PlayStation <laughs> Three controller. Remember the concept one? The, the banana, the, the bat, yeah, the battery, the boomerang. Oh man, that thing! I'll never forget when I saw that in a magazine. I was like, "You're going to control it with that? Yeah. What is this? I was like, "Somebody's going to throw that at somebody else's." I wish a third party would have convinced them to let them make a third party controller in that shape. I was just thinking that I'm. I'm actually kind of amazed that nothing like that ever really came out. Just a sort of fan service. Somebody was like, we got to hide that. Get yeah. out of here. I'm sure um, one guy at Mad out. Cats was like, oh, I got an idea. And uh-huh. they're like, get out. <laughs> <laughs> We're not, not not welcome. <laughs> not here at Mad Cats. Are you crazy? Uh-huh. Yeah. All right. Cool. Well, I hope uh, you guys, listeners, <laughs> en- enjoyed uh, Nintendo Voice Chat this week. Uh, we are a weekly podcast on IGN that talks only about Nintendo, obviously, as you can tell. Uh, but here at IGN, we have a whole family of podcasts that you can jump in on, right? One's about Sony, Microsoft, movies, etc. Uh, we also have great articles and features here as well. Also, if you like Nintendo Voice Chat and you love to write reviews, man, do I have a pitch for you. Please go over to iTunes and uh, you know write a review about Nintendo Voice Chat. Let us know what you think. Actually, I want to put out there... We've had about 30 or 40 reviews, I think, That's since awesome. we started asking. Awesome. Yeah. And they Thank you. most of them have been really good. A lot of folks really like the show. We've had a couple of low comment ones. If you are going to leave a low star, let us know why. Yeah. I think that's the more important feedback there. Like, what is it about the show that you're not feeling? Let us know. I read them. Yeah. 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 We hey, check them all the time. You get brownie points if you, wor- if you um, work the words, get the thing into your review no, in a clever you way. Don't get, you know, no, no, no special attention yep. for that. Uh, but you Jose can talk about how you. old Pear is. Uh, yeah, you can so. do that. <laughs> I'm staying so, out of this Yeah, work. please do that. Uh, <laughs> all right. So thank you very much again. Uh, next week, I guess we'll try to do something special because it's our last show before the big E3. And all the crazy stuff's going to happen. Also, I want to let you guys know up front right now, uh, loyal listeners, I am not sure if we're going to have a show during E3 or not, um, just because the three of us are going to be all over the place and getting us in one place at one time that's quiet might be kind of hard. But then again, Pear is now the GM of IGN, so he can make it happen. So make sure you tweet at... (laughs) 
pair IGN and let them know that you want an NVC the week of E3. Oh, yep. Yeah. You can also reach out to Brian Altano, Agent Bizzle, and let him know what you think of either Up at Noon or some of his great and fabulous points that he makes on the show. Thank you. Yep. And Such as the ten best video game cats. Yeah, I never did that. No, what was what are you, you just about? did a really crazy one? What was that? Was it dogs? No, that wasn't you. That wasn't me. Who did the dogs? No, I one? grew up here. That was Destiny. <laughs> that was Destiny. You stopped no, paying attention. Gear. I don't yeah. do that junk anymore. All right, <laughs> I did the top five Batmobiles to make love in. <laughs> That's what it was. That's what I saw. <laughs> all right, and you can tweet at me uh, at Jose <laughs> underscore Otero on Twitter uh, and let me know what you think of the show. Again, don't forget email. Uh, NVC at IGN.com yeah. with any and feedback or the question of the week response. And just, just Mario Kart. Mario Kart doing a is tournament? out. When you listen to this, we do have a tournament. Check the show notes on IGN. I've already tweeted a photo of it. It's really not that hard to find, but I'll make sure that our social team puts it back out there yeah. for you to see. And awesome. j- just to, re- uh, to reiterate, if we can't do a show during E3, which is possible, um, we're going to be doing tons of coverage there. Tons of like, it's going to feel like mini NVCs. The, yeah. the three You're of us are probably us. on camera yeah. talking about all the crazy stuff Nintendo's doing, checking out yeah. all the new games, doing previews, hands on, review, mm-hmm. not reviews. Um, everything we can. Right there on the spot, and I think we'll do a post show after Nintendo's conference too, or pre show. Yeah. Yep. There's, right. there, yeah, there's. So stuff you'll catch you'll catch us in in various. Mm-hmm. Weird yeah, I'm just trying to places. warn them now because I yeah. I'm already expecting a barrage of tweets like "Where's NVC that week?" and I don't know for sure yet. Great. Yeah. So cool. Thank you very much for listening, and we will be back next week, same time, same place. Get the thing. I'm cutting it out, and you know that.